It may be a cultural difference. And I do remember some in the Abyssinian church many years ago who looked askance at applause because they felt that it took away from the spirituality of the service. But these beautiful singing aggregations have enchanted us with their power. I think that we ought to give them an appreciation for all the Rabbi Davidson and Brother Stryker, and to all of you who lead this great uh, temple of worship, to my beloved brothers and sisters, officers, Barbara, Olive, and Thomas, and those who follow them in their leadership, Mr. Davis, Jr., and the choir from Abyssinian, uh, I bid you all, my beloved sisters and brothers, good evening. I was sitting with uh, Rabbi Davidson and he uh, offered me the prayer book. And uh, I think he was troubled that I was not following along with the service. And he said, you want to meditate? And I said, yeah, because there are rare opportunities when I actually get to participate in worship. And what I'm doing when I'm sitting there is not ignoring the prayer book, but trying to find the spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth. God cannot be depicted in any form. No person knows what God looks like. And we should not attempt to identify God with any cultural pattern, any racial description, any ethnic background, we have to recognize that God is a spirit. And we all search for that spirit, we seek that spirit, and we find it in interesting ways. I might find it while listening to this great choir. I might find it by a moment of meditation as I hear you read the words of Dr. King. I might find it as I am in my own prayer. And we know when the Spirit touches us because it moves something in us. And I'm always talking about how the Spirit expresses itself. It's tears, it's laughter, it's applause. It's, in some traditions, foot stomping. It's a number of ways, but we always know when deep speaks to deep. And we know the power of that spirit. In fact, it was Abraham Joshua Heschel who said that times like these call for high moral grandeur and spiritual audacity, spiritual audacity. So I'm looking for the spirit, beloved, and you read just now from the writings of Dr. King how when he felt most discouraged and how he was wondering how he could continue his struggle for civil and human justice, civil and human rights, he said that the power of the divine spoke to him. It spoke to his spirit. And often it has spoken to many of you, telling you to stand up for what you know is right, telling you not to tolerate injustice, telling you to risk your lives and your fortunes on the cause of the betterment of humanity. And I want to pause now and thank every man and woman listening to me who has taken the risk of the spirit and done the unusual things for this world. Those of you who have spoken out against injustice and immorality, those of you who have stood up for freedom, no matter what the race, ethnic background, or religion of a person truly is. I want to take a moment and thank you for standing up for that which is right, 
and being one of high moral grandeur and spiritual audacity because the spirit can get you in trouble. I remember, as many of you do, the words of Martin Imola when he said that they came, paraphrasing, for the socialist. And I did not speak up because I was not a socialist. They came for the trade unionist. And I did not speak up because I was not a trade unionist. They came for the Jews, and I did not speak up because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak up. Thank you to all of you who have gathered in the memory of Martin Luther King Jr. and have taken the risk of the spirit to speak against injustice, intolerance, unfairness, any form of bigotry whatsoever. And I think that tonight, for those listening and those gathered, that we ought to, in a word or action of appreciation, give ourselves a round of applause for the memory of Martin Luther King, Jr. Let me hasten on. Uh, the recent events have shaken the world. We thought that we were pressed by Ferguson and Staten Island, Michael Brown and Eric Gardner's death. And then the almost unimaginable, and I put it that way because it was not unimaginable that a young black man would be killed by the police in America. But the almost unimaginable took place because it happens seldom, but it does happen. Two police officers were murdered while sitting in their police cars here in the city of New York. Ah, uh, that shook up everybody. So powerful was it that it almost took our minds and hearts off the struggles of the Brown and Fergus and, and Gardner families. But then, beloved, on top of that, the horrible attack on a satirical newspaper in France and the killing of so many innocent people. But even more than that, an attack on a market store and the blatant murder of Jewish persons so shook the world that it took our minds not only off the police officers, but off of Ebola, off of Ferguson, Missouri, off of Richmond County. And it took our minds away from the terrible tragedies inflicted by Boko Haram in Nigeria. All of these are insulting to God. And all of these are thrown as indignities in the face of humanity. And that's why I join with Rabbi Davis in saying that it is certainly appropriate in this time for us to stand united as one people of God against any form of bigotry, hatred, injustice, immorality in our world. And we must not forget that it does not matter who we are because if we don't stand up, soon it will come for us. And hopefully there will be someone left to speak out. Dr. Martin Luther King risked his life for us all. He would never allow anyone to drag him so low as to hate someone else. And dearly beloved, with the vitriol, with, the, with, the, with, with the, the furious rage of intolerance and hatred that is spewing out of the mouths of leaders of unions, of so-called religious leaders, that divides our city 
and causes us to be blinded to the great work that was done in this nation by Dr. King can no longer be tolerated by us. We cannot allow this kind of division, nor can we allow the kind of advice that would leave the leadership of our city, our nation, or our world confused about where the true voices of truth and justice come from. I say that they emanate from the great houses of worship and the young rabbis and ministers who are calling us together rather than pushing us apart with empty and foolish rhetoric. I say that now is the time for that high moral grandeur, that spiritual audacity that causes us to storm the strongholds of ancient wrongs. Think of this. Last year we were here and young women, it was a bot mitzvah, right? Okay. And they were presenting themselves. What would have happened if some terrorist had placed a bomb here and four innocent girls would have had their lives snuffed out? Did that not happen in Birmingham? Terrorism is not new. Intolerance is not new. Think about the fact that the papers are reporting, and I think it was uh, 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 Mr. Valls, it was an article I read in Atlantic somewhere, talking about that France would not be France with the exodus of thousands upon thousands of Jews. It would be a failure. Isn't that interesting to hear as we celebrate the birthday of Dr. King? Because America would not be America if it were not for me. I mean that collectively. <laughs> the exodus of people who have given France so much would leave it virtually bankrupt in so many ways. The same way, literally, the exodus or the withdrawal of blacks from America. It was Langston who says, let America be America. And dearly beloved, that's what we're faced with today. There cannot be an exodus from anywhere for people who love justice and freedom. France would be a failure. This is the best of times. This is the worst of times. France would be a failure if it failed to listen to the Enlightenment philosopher, Francois-Marie uh, Arret Voltaire, who railed against intolerance and who spoke up for the fact that God is a spirit. And it does not matter whether you are Jewish. It does not matter whether you are Catholic or Protestant or Hindu, or Muslim, because those who have been in touch with the Spirit rise above all of that. That's why Joshua Heschel could walk with King. That's why so many men and women of great faith who were men and women of the Spirit could come together and rail against injustice. And that's why, even though it's not perfect yet, since the life and work of Martin Luther King Jr., we live in a more perfect union. I would say that for those of you who get an opportunity to see the film Selma, and by the way, you can come to Abyssinian on Monday around two o'clock, we will be showing it in the sanctuary. And I think it would be poorer if some of our Jewish brothers and sisters didn't show up. So come on. And what's more important to all of us is free. <laughs> Though you're coming into a Baptist church and we may take an offering. <laughs> but think of Selma. And think of Dr. King moved by the spirit to continue the struggle. Standing in the face. And we talk about the police who kill young black men. 
What's the difference today then with the infamous figure by the name of Bull Connor? Was he not a police officer? Did he not carry bigotry and hatred? And would any of us be afraid of Bull Connors on the streets of New York today? Of course we would. And that's why the voices that inform the leadership of our city must be voices that just do not quote the rhetoric of Dr. King, but actually live it and are welcomed by men and women of all faiths. And that's what shakes us. The police are not all bad. And no man or woman, race or ethnic group, religious faith is all good. And where are the voices that speak of understanding and forgiveness? I think last year, and I'm almost finished, I spoke of a young rabbi who was nailed to a tree. And just before he died, he looked at those who had inflicted this horrible death upon him and he raised his eyes up to heaven and he said, God, forgive them. And I place it before you today. It is not justice, beloved. It is the forgiveness of sin. Justice will only bring about eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth and it will leave us blind and toothless. Justice will only seek the kill factor. How many of them died against how many of us? What's justice for the man is not justice for the woman. There is a common ground of understanding and forgiveness, and we must seek it. And last year, Rabbi, we included in this worship the name of Nelson Mandela. And for good reason, because it certainly had to be forgiveness that caused him to rise to the pinnacle of our appreciation as a man who truly exemplified the best of Dr. King, but more so than Dr. King, exemplified the best of the spirit. Most of us will never reach the heights of a Dr. King or a Nelson Mandela. Most of us will never have our names called like Abraham Joshua Heschel. Most of us certainly will not have motion pictures made for us. Oh, but beloved, there's so many of us who when we reach the portals of heaven will hear God say, well done. Why? Because in our own little way, we taught our children to appreciate the humanity in others. In our own little way, we made it out to worship on a Friday evening and remembered someone who looked differently from a different culture, but was the same in the spirit of God. For those of us in our own little way who never charged usury, never exploited the poor, and if we did anything wrong, always in some way tried to make it right. We were not moved by greed or selfishness. We were not moved by a concern with our own little group, but we were moved by generosity, selflessness, and appreciation for all of God's humanity. That's what I hope for our world. I'm praying for that in France. I hope that the Jews in France will follow the pattern of the so-called Negroes in the United States. Don't run. Stay. Stand. What did we do in New York when they bombed the World Trade Center? Did we run? We stood. And because we stood, we're strong. This is a time for high moral grandeur and spiritual audacity. But be careful. The spirit can get you nailed to a tree. Be careful. The spirit can get you shot down on the Memphis balcony. Be careful. You can be riding in a parade in Texas, waving, looking like a conservative senator from Massachusetts, 
in a conservative state called Texas and have your life snatched away from you. Or you could be giving a speech, the brother of that same conservative senator, trying to bring people together, snuffed out by a bullet of intolerance and hatred. Or you could be a young Jewish boy traveling in Mississippi, moved by the spirit, whose mother still weeps that he was pulled out of a swamp. Watch the spirit, focus on the words of Dr. King. Look at the humanity in every man and woman. And we will overcome the terror in France. We will overcome the terror in Staten Island. We will overcome the terror in Ferguson, and we will continue to build a more just society and a more perfect union. To God be the glory. Great things he has done, is doing, and will continue to do. Amen.